Hi, I'm Dr. Wilson. I'm a PhD molecular biologist and welcome to another COVID debunking video. So last week I covered Dr. Dan Stock, who decided to spew a bunch of COVID misinformation in front of a board of doctors. Well, this seems to be the cool thing to do now because after that, a Dr. Sean Brooks decided that he would get up in front of a school board meeting and spew just horrible COVID misinformation. And when I say horrible, I mean this is bottom of the barrel Facebook meme conspiracy stuff. Let's get started. My name's Dr. Sean Brooks, PhD, um, Oxford. Dr. Robert Malone, who created the messenger RNA vaccine, has said no one should ever take these jabs ever under any circumstance whatsoever. He created it and he says don't ever do it. <sighs> Dr. Robert Malone did not invent these mRNA vaccines. He hasn't invented any mRNA vaccines. What he did was publish a paper back in 1989 that demonstrated how you can deliver RNA to cells using a special kind of lipids. This was the foundational technology that part of the mRNA COVID vaccines today are built on, but his version of the technology had to be improved. In addition to that, there were several other things about mRNA vaccines that needed to be improved in order for them to be used successfully. Dr. Malone wasn't involved in any of that. I said it before in my video about him, but I'll say it again. Saying that Dr. Malone invented mRNA vaccines is like saying that the inventor of the light bulb should also be credited with the invention of LED lights. It doesn't work like that. Dr. Malone genuinely did some good work with those original papers that he published, but now he's just become another COVID-19 grifter spreading whatever misinformation is going to get him the clicks and gaining the clout and money that comes with it. I mean, seriously, he's even been on Steve Bannon's podcast to spread COVID misinformation. You don't get much lower than that. And the fact that Dr. Sean Brooks here is bringing up Malone's name in the way that he did was the first hint I had that he is nothing more than a Facebook troll. But we'll get to that. The people who have taken it are going to die in the next six months to three to five years. You know, I actually love very specific claims like this. At the beginning of this year, people were making this exact claim, but they were saying that people who get the COVID shots are going to die in six months or three months. Now it's graduated to on the order of years. But no matter which time frame they pick, they're going to have to keep changing it because it's going to keep being wrong. It's like when psychics try to predict the end of the world and they get it wrong. So they say, oh, never mind, I have some more intuition now, and it's actually going to be on this later date. And then that never comes true either. But for some reason, people still keep believing them. For three reasons. Number one, you've d dr dramatically decreased your own immune system by 35%. Yeah, that's completely made up. There is no reason to say that. No experiments, no measurements no science at all to back that claim up. If you take any booster shot, you will die. That's it. I don't think anyone told Israel that. There are people in Israel who are elderly and at risk of COVID who have been triple vaccinated already, and I don't think they've died. You take a flu shot in the future, you will die. I guess I'll find out when I get my flu shot this season, now won't I? The second reason, antibody dependent enhancement. And antibody dependent enhancement is what is happening with these jabs with everybody who has taken them. No, there is no antibody dependent enhancement that has been observed with these vaccines at all. If there was any antibody dependent enhancement going on with these vaccines, we would have seen it in animal studies. We would have seen it in people who have been vaccinated but have since gotten COVID. We would have seen it everywhere, but we haven't. Instead, we see that people who get vaccinated against COVID have less severe disease than those who remain unvaccinated. In fact, there's been a new report recently where people who survived the first SARS and got vaccinated against COVID-19 actually had a really amazingly robust immune response, and it was safe. This is just another hint that even if this virus changes a lot, antibody-dependent enhancement is probably not going to be a thing with these vaccines. The third thing, blood clotting. Everyone who has taken the jabs is blood clotting. If you don't believe me, there's a way you can find out. Take what's called a D-dimer test. What that does is that detects blood clotting at the microscopic level. 
Yeah, no, the whole blood clotting issue was found to be an incredibly rare instance associated mostly with the Johnson & Johnson and AstraZeneca vaccines. Despite millions and millions of doses of both of these vaccines being given, there have been less than 100 reports of these incredibly rare blood clot situations. Doctors are now aware of the signs and symptoms that patients should be looking for if they receive these vaccines, and they're aware of how to treat this specific blood clot disorder. There is no evidence to suggest this widespread blood clotting in COVID vaccinated individuals that this guy is suggesting. In fact, your chances of getting harmful blood clots are orders of magnitude higher if you actually get infected with COVID-19 versus getting vaccinated against it. And no, please don't go taking D-dimer tests trying to self-diagnose yourself. These D-dimer tests are not conclusive, and a doctor will definitely order one for you if they think you need it. If you've been vaccinated against COVID and you're really worried about blood clots, which you shouldn't be, but I understand if you are, then all you have to do is just be aware of the signs and symptoms that you should be looking for. And if you experience those, then contact your doctor immediately. Because again, this is a treatable syndrome. Millions have died from the jabs. Yeah, that's just insanity. There is absolutely no way that millions of people have died from this vaccine in the few months that it's been widely available, and nobody's noticed. There have been almost 5 billion doses of COVID vaccines given across the world, and across countries, across governments, across labs, across hospitals, across disciplines. The message remains consistent in the data, and that is that these vaccines are extremely safe. So to the parents who are actually considering jabbing their own children, you're going to sterilize them permanently. People who have taken the jabs are sterilized. How does he think that he can make these claims and just get away with it? There's no reason to believe this. In fact, there are several women who were enrolled in the phase three clinical trials last year who got pregnant during the trial or have since gone on to get pregnant. And so far, everything looks normal. Nothing is standing out as unusual in any of these groups. You've also injected yourself with the equivalent of HIV. This is it. We're, we're about to reach peak covid territory here. I can just feel it. You can now no longer breastfeed, donate blood, donate organs, donate blood plasma, nor bone marrow. <laughs> That's just not true. You can absolutely still donate blood, plasma, organs, whatever, if you've been vaccinated against COVID. And yes, you can still breastfeed. My wife was seven months pregnant when she was fully vaccinated against COVID. Since then, we've had a healthy baby who is now four months old, and my wife breastfeeds her every day and hasn't had any issues with it. So, this guy is just straight up lying. The jabs create spike proteins. They're in the jabs themselves, and they create it by snapping your RNA in half. You are no longer a human anymore. Okay, I was wrong. That is peak covid idiot territory. They snap your RNA in half, and then you're no longer human? What in the world? <laughs> this idea of snapping RNA in half and making you no longer human, I mean, I'm sorry. It's just like he didn't graduate high school biology. In fact, this whole time, he's talking more like a troll in the comment section of some random Facebook page than he is talking like a scientist. So I did something that I don't normally do with people I debunk, and I tried to find out who this guy is. And in fact, there's absolutely no evidence at all that I could find that this Dr. Sean Brooks here has any expertise in medicine or biology. But there is a Dr. Sean Brooks who has a PhD in education, who has written books on the topic. And according to one podcast that others have pointed out, this Dr. Sean Brooks looks very similar to the man in the video. So he's probably a guy who has a PhD in education and is trying to get this audience and everyone filming him to believe that he is an expert in medicine or biology. This guy wanted to be Dr. Dan Stock so bad, but in the end, it's very obvious that he is absolutely clueless. Well, that's going to do it for this week's video. That sure was an interesting one. 
As always, all the links to all of the science that I talk about in this video are linked in the description below. And if you want to have your questions answered by professional virologists, then go to the link in the description on the American Society for Virology town hall meetings, which are free Zoom meetings held by the American Society for Virology, where members of the general public can go in and ask questions to actual virologists concerning anything from COVID, the vaccines, whatever. I encourage you to do this because I'm just one scientist who's trying his best to communicate this stuff to you. But if you like this video and you want to see more, then don't forget to subscribe so you can catch me next week where I'll be debunking some more funky stuff. See you then.